and it is Astronomy Daily Live. Hey, 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 everybody. What's up? Hope everybody's doing well out there in the universe and the world. Everything's great here. Pretty good, at least. We got our uh, expected uh, early beginning of the monsoon, uh, thanks to uh, Hurricane Bud. Hurricane Bud is moving through as we speak. Now, I'm inland pretty far, so uh, no hurricanes actually get to my location. But uh, tropical depressions, yeah, we're right in the middle of one. So it's been, uh, it's been raining most of today, and it definitely isn't um, sort of the typical monsoon kind of rain. The typical monsoon kind of rain is big, big drops, big ice cold, ice cold drops. The, uh, um, <laughs> it's, it, it's actually almost unpleasantly cold. Uh, that water is so cold. It's, it, I mean, it, it's it's got to be at least 60 degrees if not if not less right but um when it hits you when it hits you it's just like ah <laughs> so but that's not what this is this is this is more like a you know like a northwest rain uh where it's just sort of uh rain you know um drizzling types i uh I was driving home from from work though, and and uh, did get hit pretty hard, pretty hard. So hey there, everybody in the chat. I see Bob Dong and Uncle Bill, um, Miss Lady Catherine, Bobby. So hey, hope everybody's doing well out there. Yeah. So it's it's sort of the official. Uh, this is the first rain that we've had in mm, at least a couple months, if if not more. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty much coincidental with the beginning of the monsoon season, which usually starts around the first week of July. I always say that the fireworks here start on the 4th of July. So come on, everybody, gather around to this circle of, of friends. It's like a, uh, a virtual uh, patio, right? Uh, lanai, where we're just sort of sitting out right and at least at least where i am here it's sort of drizzly so we've got you know the, the covering over us and we can hear the the drizzling oh and the smells right the smell of a first rain in um two or three months just just brings out just this incredible spectrum of smell that that uh yeah is pretty pretty amazing so Gather together, grab your favorite beverage or other consumable of choice. This is uh, this is hydrogen hydroxide again. Again, hydrogen hydroxide is pretty much my go-to. But once in a while, once in a while, I I need a little extra boost, right? I need a little extra boost. So instead of the hydrogen hydroxide HOH, right, I will go for the dihydrogen monoxide, H2O. And that, that really, you know, gets me going, right? I mean, if I have to stay up late or, uh, you know, if I'm feeling a little, a little draggy, I will go for the dihydrogen monoxide. But generally, 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 I just brew me up a nice concoction of hydrogen hydroxide, HOH, and that does me very well, so cheers. Mm. Yeah, that's a nice fresh, fresh batch. So, yeah, you know, in in that mug is about uh, mm, ten to the twenty third molecules or so. Maybe you know, maybe uh, one one point one, one point two times um, ten to the twenty third. But you know, 
that extra decimal, who cares about 10 to the 22nd things when you have 10 to the 23rd things? So, you know, but, so there's a few molecules in there. And, you know, it's really, you know, we, we humans, you know, always, we always think, think that we sort of, you know, have a handle on, on things. And, uh, you know, astronomers have come up with all of these, you know, numerical tricks to, to, uh, to, to try to, to try to put our heads around things, right? So, you know, in, instead of saying six, six trillion kilometers, right? We say one light year. Um, it's just uh, you know we we try to simplify th things that are that are actually you know pretty pretty complex and pretty pretty uh, numerous, right? I mean you know right there is uh, in I don't I don't know if you know this little chemistry fact or not, but in in one mole of whatever substance you have in one mole, there, is, there are about 10 to the 23rd um, uh, um, particles. It could be atoms, it could be molecules, it could be anything. Um, and that's called um, um, Avogadro's number. And yeah, it's something like six times 10 to the 23rd, something like that, I forget exactly. Um, uh, but it's the number of, of, of things in one mole of your substance. And one mole of your substance is simply the atomic weight in grams, okay? So, uh, so with hydrogen hydroxide, HOH, right? That's two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. And, um, Oxygen uh, has an atomic weight of, of uh, is it eight? Is it atomic weight or atomic mass? Oh, I think it's atomic weight. Oxygen, that's, that's the atomic number. I'm gonna cheat and look on Google here. I think actually oxygen, the atomic weight is a little bit more atomic weight. Uh, oh, e i g h t uh, oxygen oxygen oh of course sixteen right okay so sixteen yeah there there are there are uh, eight and and this is this is the story that I've heard okay now we've never well uh. Yeah, I mean, we've we've sort of we sort of uh, do have a I guess a pretty good handle on what's in the nucleus if 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 we believe the effects that we're seeing, right? Because we can smash up a, a nucleus of oxygen and and note that you know eight of the particles um, in a magnetic field say you know kind of do that they kind of bend, right? And eight of the particles go straight, right? They're not affected by the magnetic field. So supposedly we want to call those the bendy ones protons and the straight ones neutrons. So anyway, atomic weight of oxygen is 16. The atomic weight of hydrogen is one. And there's two of them in HOH. So the atomic weight of hydrogen hydroxide is 18, okay? So one mole of, of hydrogen hydroxide is 18 grams. And 18 grams is a little more than uh, half an ounce, half an ounce. So, okay, well, I'm, I'm uh, underestimating how much I have in re even remaining in this mug, right? That's not even quite half of this mug. I think this is a, a quart. And I wanna say that's about, that's about half a liter, about 500 um, milliliters or so. 
Um, now, the density of HOH, uh, by definition, right, by definition is one gram per cubic centimeter. So, um, if there's uh, 500 milliliters of water left, well, in this whole thing, okay, in this whole thing, uh, okay, let's just say that's about half, right? So that's about 250 milliliters or, or about 250 grams, right? 250 grams. Does that make sense? Is that about a pound of water? Well, 200, that's about half a pound, right? So half a pound of water? Okay, let's um, go with that. Th that's fine. So how many moles of, uh-oh, did I, I think I, I, uh, I, I did not, um, uh, I think I was, I was a little imprecise in what I just called, called this. This is hydrogen hydroxide, whatever I called it um, before. Nah, forget that. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> All right. Now, let's just say that there's uh, 250 grams of HOH in that. And if one mole is 18 grams, then see, I've got my uh, handy dandy calculator out. Every good scientist, right? Every good scientist has a calculator uh, within reach, right? At all times. Hey there, Jill. Nice to see you. Caught uh, <clears throat> part of your shortwave show today. I didn't um, catch it all, but I'm glad I caught a little bit of it. I, uh, you know, that that time for me is 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 just absolutely no good at all because I'm usually um, at work still. But uh, I uh, I got finished with things there a little bit early, and when I got home, I one of the first things I always do is check my um, um, YouTube subscriptions, and I saw that you were live, so of course, of course, I'm going to get on because, uh, because, uh, yeah, I, uh, I like what you're doing. I, uh, I wish I could be more like that. Who knows? Someday, someday. All right, handy dandy calculator, 250 grams into 18 is uh, 13 point um, 13 point nine right so there's 13 point nine uh, uh, moles of hydrogen hydroxide in in my thing there and if I multiply that by six times ten to the 23rd which is how many uh, molecules there are in there well in one mole I get eight 8.3 times 10 to the 24th, 8.3 times 10 to the 24th. So that's a trillion trillion. In fact, 8 trillion trillion. So right there, there's 8 trillion trillion molecules. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I cannot wrap my head around that. Uh, when you know once you get up above you know 10 to the 15th 10 to the 12th something like that it's it, i mean it's even too much for me um and i i i'm used to big numbers right um but holy moly a trillion trillion molecules r right there watch this i'm gonna make them all <laughs> disappear now in about 10 seconds. Watch, watch. Ready? Cheers. Wow. That, that was a trillion, trillion molecules. I, it's just blows my mind, blows my mind. So, <laughs> Patrick, you are you are awesome. You're awesome. Thanks for coming in. Greatly appreciate you coming in. I like the, uh, you know, I, uh, um, uh, how many of you have seen Planet of the Apes with um, Charlton Heston? 
Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you noticed in, I mean, it, it's made pretty obvious, but um, when Charlton Heston uh, is sort of on, on trial and he, he wants to speak, right? There, there are like three judges, right? Three, three ape um, judges. I think they, um, uh, I think they're the, um, 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 the orangutans, and they they are in charge of 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 um, sort of the religion and the law, right? right. And in that one scene, right, um, the one on the left um, is I don't remember um, what the order is, but I think um, he's covering his ears, and the one in the middle is covering his his mouth and the one on the right side is covering his eyes just like um what you did there patrick so yeah that that um reminded me of um planet of the apes get your dirty paws off or how does it go get your paws off of me you damn dirty ape <laughs> yeah it's just great just just awesome 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 um so yeah I, uh, I, I think um, Charlton Heston as a person probably wasn't, wasn't all that great, but as an actor, as an actor, Charlton Heston was, was like amazing, absolutely amazing. Now, there was something, there was something that I was going to talk about today, and it had to do with... Uh, was some kind of story I was going to tell, but dang, if I can't remember now what that was, what that was, it had something to do with another topic that I was going to bring up. Dang. Yeah, I must be getting, Gilles, I must be getting old. <laughs> I must be, because I, yeah, I'm not remembering now exactly what, uh, what I wanted to say, say there. I'm gonna get my uh, smartphone started on my live stream so I can uh, so I can keep up with all you troublemakers out there. Yeah, hope everybody's doing well. Come on in, come on in. Oh, I uh, I I hit 100 subscribers for the first time, so the clock is now ticking, right? If I can maintain 100 subscribers or go, go above for the next seven days, right? One week from today, one week from today, then I will, I will, I will get a new camera. I'm going to get a new camera if I'm able to maintain 100 subscribers for the next week or so. Now, I know that measuring um, the number of subscribers is is the is is not the way to really measure any kind of success or any kind of growth or anything like that. I mean, I know really really well. I mean, fundamentally, um, I think it, it it comes down to either number of views or um, number of minutes viewed, and I don't know which one of those two is sort of more valuable um but yeah a number of subscribers probably probably doesn't doesn't seem to uh matter all that much so patrick manny is done cutting the grass and trimming and trimming bushes yeah i uh i got all my well you know that's not exactly true because even out here in the desert uh, I do have a lawnmower and a trimmer, but uh, you know I don't I don't I don't mow like grass and stuff, right? I mow um, tumbleweed and um, and uh, and another kind of 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 weed um, that it that's actually a form of um, amaranth, but um, out here it's called uh, pigweed pigweed. Um, I think it's also called like red 
read something. Um, and then the, um, the tumbleweed that we have out here uh, is, is called Russian thistle, Russian thistle. So, um, yeah, Jill, I heard that you weren't feeling well. So I was actually a little bit surprised when I saw your uh, live stream. So I uh, hope you're feeling okay. Um, you know, those kinds of things suck. But, but um, as I was saying in last night's show, um, you know, uh, um, uh, it's, it, it's definitely not fun being sick, right? But um, one of the things that I do to sort of, I mean, if nothing else, to sort of make myself feel better and maybe, you know, I mean, being a scientist, it's like, you know, I'm always trying to observe things. And, and uh, so, I mean, I, I find it absolutely fascinating, the process of becoming well, right? Um, you get sick, right? And, and it's like, uh, you know, down, down. It's like, oh, I feel worse, I feel worse, I feel worse. And then at some point there is like a plateau, right? And that plateau could, could be, you know, qu you know um, quite a while too, right? But then, but then you start, you start getting better, start getting better. And it's that, it's that process that absolutely fascinates me because it's like, you know, um, you know, uh, for the most part, um, I, I let things just sort of um, 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 do their own thing, you know. So when I get a cold or a flu or anything, I, I just, um, uh, I don't, I don't really, you know, um, do any kinds of drugs or anything at all. I just sort of let, let nature, I sort of trust, um, nature, right. And it's, it's, uh, um, it's fascinating. It's fascinating that, that through no effort of my own, right. At least conscious, um, effort um i i start getting better i start getting better and better and better until until i've i've actually forgotten right how how terrible i actually did feel right but i know that i feel better and it's like wow that's that's really really amazing so so uh you know i i recommend you know if you don't all already Observe, observe how your body heals itself. I mean, even with extra help, right? I mean, even, even with, you know, pharmaceuticals, which, which, you know, can be extremely useful, right? I just, I, I, I tend to think that they're probably over, overused a little bit. Um, uh, but I mean, even with that extra help, it's not the actual drug that is doing anything. It's just providing an environment for your body to heal, right? So, so uh, you know, even even with help, um, you know, the healing process is is absolutely absolutely amazing, right? And and it's automatic, right? I don't have to think about it. Um, you know, usually when I have a, a cold or a flu, I notice that. Um, certain things change, right? Um, I think, I think, um, I forget um, which one, but uh, um, I completely lose my appetite. Um, I think it's probably with a, with a flu. I, I think so. It's like, you know, I cannot even think of food, right? It's like, no, no, you know, I mean, I don't feel hungry and I'm put off, right? It's like, just no, no. Um, Hello there, Totterbert. How is everything? Watched a couple of your um, videos um, the other day. Yeah, nice stuff. Nice, nice, nice stuff. Um, uh, um, if you're into those kinds of things, I, I, I can definitely understand, uh, um, you know, that kind of passion. That That's the kind of passion that I... Um, 
um, greatly appreciate regardless of of what the um, subject matter is. So uh, yeah, yeah, um, everybody um, check out Totterbert's um, YouTube channel. Um, he does, uh, and and I I'm I think I'm greatly um, I'm paraphrasing here, but um, he reviews uh, all all kinds of radios, and uh, it's 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 pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, um, as I say, you know, I I don't have I don't have that deep of an interest in um, radios, right? I don't have a deep interest in cars, right? But what I like, as I said, is is I like the passion. I like to see others as excited about what 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 they're passionate about as as what I'm um, very excited about. And and uh, so yeah, so yeah, I uh, I like it. How about radio? telescopes or well, how about radio telescopes expand please man there was a story I was gonna tell you and it it was a good one and now for the life of me I cannot remember what I what I was going to to say the uh, um, yeah the Green Bank um, telescope is that is that that's still operational, right? They were they were talking about shutting that down a little bit uh, a little while ago, but maybe uh, maybe I heard maybe I didn't hear hear that exactly right. I don't know. I think it's part of the deep space um, network, right? Um, Einstein at home. Okay. Um, I want to, uh, is that, uh, yeah, you're, uh, tell me more. Tell me more. Einstein at home has something to do with crunching radio data. Huh. It's, sounds a lot like, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that sounded a lot like um, SETI at home, which, as far as I know, is still uh, is still uh, running. Gamma ray pulsar search. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Coming from a Russia investor. Yeah. A gamma ray pulsar search with a radio telescope? Hmm. I don't. Th I don't think those two things. Uh, I don't think a radio telescope can see gamma rays. Gamma rays are on the other side of the spectrum from radio, past the X rays. So yeah, there's a. There's a mixing of terms there. Folding at home. Uncle Bill, what what is folding at home? I've never heard of that one. Folding at home? <laughs> is that like origami? Like like a like a um, parallel origami processing? What the heck is folding at home? Huh. Man, I'm out. <laughs> I wish I could remember that uh, story I wanted to tell you. It totally, it totally escapes me now. So um, I'm thinking about, about doing a new, a new project. Hmm. Totterbert, I am. I am now. This this up here is extremely dense matter. I I usually liken it to you know to like neutron star 
um, density. So I, I can be pretty dense, but I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure what the relationship is between a, okay. So you're saying a binary pulsar search, but then you're talking about proteins Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So the folding at home is about proteins and cancer while the pulsar binary search. Okay. All right. You're talking about two, two different things. Okay. I've got you. I, I've got you. Yeah. You know, pulsars for the most part, for the most part emit at all wavelengths right the first pulsar that that we ever saw was the pulsar associated with m1 the crab um, nebula and and that one um pulses at about at, at, i think about like th uh three hertz it's about a third of a second or so um frequency um or wavelength or uh frequency yeah um so three times a second, um, and that that's an optical one, right? But it also pulses in the radio and the X-ray and everything in between, right? So um, yeah, chat lag. Well, it's it, it's not necessarily chat lag. It's it's the fact that two topics were being discussed at exactly the same time. <laughs> that's just, yeah, that's a skill I'm going to have to learn. So you guys teach me, teach me, teach me. I am, you know, that's, that's one of the big things of this live stream is that, is that I want to get better and better and better and better. And uh, so if, if there are certain skills that I should be learning, then I definitely want to for sure for sure einstein at home i'm gonna have to uh check that out yeah i'm gonna have to check that out for for sure was i asking multiple questions was i doing that yeah okay well <laughs> i know i know i'm um, guilty of that i uh if if uh if you let me loose, I'm I'm going to I'm going to throw uh, dozens or hundreds of questions uh, at you. So so uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. Well, that happens. That happens. So yeah, I was thinking of a new project and and uh, for for this channel. Um, uh, early on, I thought, well, hey, you know, why don't I why don't I read like a sci-fi book, right? Um, Pamela Gay uh, was reading um, um, was reading a book, and it's like, okay, you know, that's a pretty good idea. So, so I thought, okay, I'm going to read, you know, I'm going to read a book of of my choice, and you know, there's probably copyright problems and everything else, but I'm just going to do it, and you know, it's it's. Uh, it's much easier to apologize uh, for something than uh, than ask um, permission. Um, so so uh, so I'm I'm going to uh, so I thought, hey, you know, I'm going to grab um, uh, Isaac Asimov's um, short story uh, series called I Robot. And I will I will just read read those right. I'll read one um, one story um, or maybe half a story, you know, depending on how long it is. Um, every week or every month or something, right? So I I went to do my first one, and um, I thought, oh, you know, I'll do it outside. It's nice. It's a different environment, you know, than this. And and uh, you know, you got birds chirping and the wind blowing a little bit and some scenery, right? It'd be really, really cool. And I'll sit there and read, you know, some, some really awesome sci-fi. 
highly recommended if if you have not uh, read um, Asimov's um, um, iRobot series. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely um, read those. They are they are awesome. You don't necessarily have to read them in order. It helps a little bit, but it's not entirely um, necessary. And then read read his three uh, robot um, novels, right? Um, which which are the caves of well, I guess there's there's four um, or five now. I've only read the first three. There's the um, um, the caves of steel. There's um, the naked sun, and oh, what's that? What's that last one? Oh, it's awful. Oh, it's awful. Yeah, I think I'm really getting old. Beginning to forget everything. <laughs> um, anyway, so so it's like, okay, I'll do this, right? And uh, you know what? That is really hard to do. It's hard to, um, you know, I think if I had editing capabilities, I, I could probably get away with it. But um, like doing it in one take or doing it live, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's just, it's a lot harder than what it looks, for sure, for sure. Um, you know, uh, really have to sort of be prepared. You cannot just read it uh, fresh because there are words that, that you know, uh, at least I am going um, to stumble over and mispronounce and you know try to try to sound out you know and uh, that that doesn't do for for good reading so anyway um i've come up with another idea that that uh i uh um one of the youtube channels that i i watch pretty regularly is um rick beato uh he's he's a um um a musician former um, record um, um, producer, um, really, really, you know, I mean, he knows, he, I mean, he knows a lot about um, music. And he's been doing this series called What Makes This Song Great? And um, he actually has the individual tracks, right? I mean, being a producer, he has um, connections, right? So he, um, he can actually get um, um, the individual tracks and, and, um, and then of course, you know, be able to separate them out. So, you know, let's, let's listen to and analyze, you know, the drums and, and we'll listen to all the drums and then, and then, you know, he'll, um, mix in, you know, the vocals over that, or, you know, some kind of, of thing that, that you never even knew was there, right? Because it, because a lot of these mixes are very, very subtle, right? Very, very subtle. And so you really don't pay any attention to them, although they're there, right? And once he um, points them out, um, you hear them and it's like, wow, that was always there. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, so, you know, he, he is doing this series called What Makes This Song Great? And so, the idea that I've had in my head for a while is is to do um, sort of a similar series called "What Makes This Paper Great," and um, 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 what it would be would be a a more detailed review of some kind of paper, right? Some kind of scientific or astronomical um, paper. But that's sort of where I was stuck. It's like, well, what paper? What paper do I choose, right? Do I choose, you know, sort of a a modern one, um, you know, that I can get from um, um, archive.org, or, you know, I mean, what 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 papers um, do I choose? And then it sort of dawned on me the other day. It's like, you know, I need to. 
I need to think about like famous, famous scientists and um, what are they famous for, right? What are they famous for? And then go find that paper um, where they describe sort of for the first time um, whatever the thing they're um, famous for. And, and, um, and so, you know, I thought of that a couple of days ago and it's like, okay, I think I might um, um, be able to do that. The only, the only problem that I have right now, right, is that I, I do not have, um, I do not have any video editing software per se. Now I do have a piece of software on my um, Linux machine that's called FFmpeg, which is awesome, which is very, very awesome. So I would be able to sort of, uh, you know, um, edit that way, right? Because I can extract pieces and I can um, put pieces together and all that. But in terms of transitions and text, and all that, it, it'd be like, uh, I don't know. So um, so I don't really have any editing capabilities. So I would have to do this like in a single take. And if I'm gonna do it in a single take, I might as well do it live, right? Um, uh, so yeah, I, I'm thinking about that. And I guess what I've sort of determined is, is that I'm going to uh, start looking at the the um, um, the Nobel laureates in physics, and um, because you know there's a lot of um, famous uh, scientists there, and and um, I'm I'm going to uh, find um, at least one of their papers that that um, led to them getting a um, getting their um, Nobel Prize. And, um, you know, the, uh, uh, those, those sort of by, by default um, are going to be great papers. So I think I'm going to start a series. I don't know exactly how or when um, this is going to start, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a series on what makes this paper great. And uh, we'll go through um, um, these papers. I was actually uh, reading through the uh, uh, um, one of the papers today from the first um, Nobel Prize in Physics laureate, um, William, what was his name? I should know this, right? Uh, where is he? Way down at the bottom here. William, um, Wilhelm Conrad Rutchen, or Rutchen. And uh, he, he is the discoverer of, of um, a Rontgen, Rontgen, sorry. He is the discoverer of Rontgen rays, which he called X-rays. So uh, he got the um, Nobel Prize in physics in 1901 for, for the discovery of x-rays. And um, I pulled up um, one of his pa um, papers, which I, uh, let's, let's just get into it, eh? So I'm gonna share my screen here. No better time than the present. So hide that, I'm gonna go over here and let's see so yeah i was over on the site called nobelprize.org and um there they list all all the nobel prizes of course including the ones for physics and um i guess in 1901 the for one for one reason or another um um Rongen uh, didn't actually make this this speech. It it was um, it it was presented by 
um, the um, president of the Royal Swedish Academy of, of Sciences. And, uh, and so, yeah, this apparently what is what was read or spoken uh, at the ceremony, right? Um, and pretty amazing, right? It says, um, the Academy awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics to Wilhelm Conrad, Conrad Röntgen, professor in the University of Munich for, for the discovery with which his name is linked for all time, the discovery of so-called Röntgen rays, or as he himself calls them, X-rays. These are, as we know, a new form of energy and has received the name rays on account of their property of propagating themselves in straight lines as light does. Now, the actual constitution of this radiation of energy is still unknown. Several of its characteristic properties have, however, been discovered first by Ronjan himself and then by other physicists who have directed their, their researches into this field. And there is no doubt that much success will be gained in the physical science when this strange energy form is sufficiently investigated and its wide field thoroughly explored. <laughs> it's, it's just great. Um, let us remind ourselves of, of but one of the properties which have been found in Röntgen rays, that which is the basis of the extensive use in X-rays in medical practice. Many bodies, just as they allow light to pass through them in varying degrees, behave likewise with X-rays, but with the difference that some which are totally impenetrable to light can easily be penetrated by X-rays, while, while other bodies stop them completely. So just very, very cool, right? And then um, if, if that isn't enough, right, we can actually look at one of his actual papers. Um, what am I going after here? Discord. Oh, Discord. As I put a link over there, put a link over there. Yeah, Totterbird, if, if you want to learn some music theory, check out uh, Rick Beato. It's B-E-A-T-O. -B it's like Beato, but it's Beato. And uh, he's, he, he's awesome. He actually has two YouTube channels, so you'll have to check him out in both places. One is sort of a live stream, and the other is more of a produced music theory channel. And being a musician, I definitely appreciate music theory. I appreciate it a lot more than what I used to, for sure. So this paper, um, as you'll see, was was published in the journal Science on the 14th of February, 1896. So this is uh, 100 and, 122 years ago. Hundred and twenty-two years ago, and he calls it um, on a new kind of rays. And there's an asterisk because the asterisk says that what we're about to read has been uh, translated. from uh, German. So yeah, this, you know, he just sort of lays it out, right? Just sort of lays it out. A discharge from a large induction coil is passed through a Hiddorf's vacuum tube 
or through a well-exhausted Crookes or Leonard's tube. The tube is surrounded by a fairly close-fitting shield of black paper. It is then possible to see in a completely darkened room that paper covered on one side with barium um, platinocyanide lights up with brilliant fluorescence when brought into the neighborhood of the tube. Um, whether the painted side or the other side be turned, turned towards the tube. The fluorescence is still visible at two meters distance. <laughs> so yeah, he just, he goes through here and just, you know, lays out his observations, what, what, what he, what he saw. And, you know, as I said, I think, you know, if I were actually doing this as, you know, what makes this paper great, I would, I would, uh, I'd want to get into a lot more um, detail here. Um, but yeah, you know, this, this is one of the papers that, that, uh, you know, uh, he, he wrote and which led him on a path to, uh, obtaining the Nobel Prize uh, five years later. So yeah, he goes through this and, and uh, you know, just sort of describes uh, various experiments. Um, he's, he's, you know, shining this stuff through various materials, various um, thicknesses, of um, materials, different kinds of materials, right? He's th throwing it, throwing it through platinum, lead, zinc, um, aluminum. Um, he uh, um, he he notes that a photographic plate is um, sensitive to this to these new rays. Um, says that he's not been able to show experimentally that the x-rays give rise to any caloric effects. So it's not heating anything up. Um, these, however, uh, may be assumed for the phenomenon of fluorescence show that the x-rays are capable of transformation. So this I thought was kind of interesting, right? The eye placed close placed close to the apparatus sees nothing. So, yeah, you know, they're sticking their eyes in this beam of x-rays. <laughs> Oy vey, and not seeing anything. So, like, well, man, that's, that's what you got to do, though. You know, it's like, you, I mean, they didn't even know, they had no idea, right? They had no idea what the stuff was. So yeah, they. Uh, so he he wanted to know if if these X-rays um, could be you know refracted like through a prism or a lens or anything, right? If they saw any kind of deviation at all, and of course they didn't. Um, So yeah, here's reflection. So the, he did refraction, didn't find anything. Um, and uh, ref um, reflection, I think the same, same thing. He just didn't see any kind of reflection, no kind of refraction at all. Um, oh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, it seems, therefore, that these three metals can reflect X-rays. Sorry about that. So, um, platinum, lead, zinc, and aluminum. Uh, on on the developed negative, the star-shaped impression showed dark under platinum, lead, and more markedly under zinc. 
the the aluminum gave no image. It seems therefore that these three metals can reflect the X-rays. As however, another explanation is possible. I repeated the experiment with this only difference that a film of thin aluminum foil was interposed between the sensitive film and the metal stars. Such an aluminum plate is opaque to ultraviolet rays, but transparent to X-rays. In the result, the images appeared as before, this pointing to the existence of reflection at metal surfaces. So just, you know, a lot of experimentation. Um, he gets into uh, whether whether the beam uh, moves in any kind of magnetic field, right? A, f a further distinction and a noteworthy one results from the action of a magnet. I have not succeeded in observing any deviation of the X-rays, even in very strong magnetic fields. But he notes that there is a deviation with um, whatever is um, coming out of cathodes. Whoop. Oh, I'm jumping ahead here. Oh, jumping ahead again. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, of many researches, it appears that the, that the place of the most brilliant phosphorescence of the walls of the discard, discharge tube is the chief seat once the x-rays originate and spread in all directions. That is, the x-rays proceed from the front where uh, cathode rays strike the glass. If one deviates the cathode rays within the tube by means of a magnet, it is seen that the x-rays proceed from a new point, i.e. again from the end of the cathode rays. Hmm, interesting. So he says that he's observed and photographed um, um, many such shadow pictures. Thus, I have an outline of part of a door covered with lead paint. The image was produced by placing the discharge tube on one side of the door and the sensitive plate on the other. I also have a shadow of the bones of the hand um, of a wire wound upon a bobbin. Um, of a set of weights in a box, a compass card and needle completely enclosed in a metal case of a um, um, piece of metal where the, the x-rays show the want of homogene homogeneity and of other things. So here's his famous picture of the human hand, right? With the, with, with the bones and the, and the ring, right? This is supposed to be a ring. <laughs> But that's uh, probably one of the first x-rays, right, ever, ever uh, taken. Um, haven't seen any interference effects, not yet. Um, don't know if electrostatic forces act on x-rays yet. Um, if one asks, uh, what then are these X-rays? So since they are not cathode rays, one might suppose from their power of exciting fluorescence and chemical action, them um, to be due to ultraviolet light. Um, in opposition to, to this view, a weighty set of considerations present itself. If X-rays be indeed ultraviolet light, then that light must possess the following properties. It is not um, refracted in pa passing from air into water, um, carbon bisulfide, um, aluminum, rock salt, glass, or zinc. Um, it must also um, be incapable of um, regular um, reflection at, at the surfaces of the above bodies. It cannot be polarized by any polarizing media. And the absorption of various bodies must depend chiefly on their um, densities. 
Um, so these ultraviolet rays must behave quite differently from visible um, infrared and the ultraviolet rays. So something, uh, something new, something new. Oh yeah, he. Uh, um, this is an interesting uh, paragraph here because I'm not exactly sure what he's talking about. The kind of relationship between the new rays and light rays appear to exist. At least the, the formation of shadows, fluorescence, and the production of chemical action point in this direction. Now it has been known for a long time that besides the transverse vibrations, which account for, for the phenomena of light, it is possible that longitudinal vibrations should exist in the ether. And according to, to the view of some physicists, must exist. It is granted that their existence is not yet been made clear, and these properties are not experimentally um, demonstrated. Should not the new rays be ascribed to longitudinal waves in the ether? So oh, yeah, you know, last paragraph. It's like I don't know. I gotta, I gotta look more. <laughs> so yeah, you know, um, that's a great paper, right? And I would like to, you know, talk a little bit more about uh, what makes this paper great, and um, and then you know, um, um, go through a few of these, right? I mean. Uh, let's go through, you know, the paper where, where Einstein ended up with E equals um, MC squared. Um, and, and, you know, uh, you might not be able to follow all the math, but um, we can at least sort of observe the process and, uh, you know, maybe gain a little bit of appreciation for, you know, not only what makes that paper great, but what makes that equation so so um, so incredibly great. So I don't know, just uh, just thoughts bouncing around in my head. I sort of notice that uh, we are at uh, three o three UTC. So I think I think it's about time to. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm getting the call anyway. It's it's about time to exit exit this planet and uh, you know head back up where the view is a little better. So yeah, so hope everybody has a, a great evening and a great day. Um, yeah, I think I think I will call it I will call it a an end to the live stream for for tonight um you know every every single live stream is um different and i sort of like it that way um never never really have any major major plans in terms of um what i'm going to talk about or anything um andy nice to see you in the chat sorry i didn't say hi um, um before you're probably just lurking there, which which is very, very cool. Speaking of very, very cool, hit the thumbs up if you wish, if you wish. Um, yeah, you know, I don't really have any any planned things here. This is supposed to be just a casual, fun thing. I'm not chasing any kind of news stories. I'm not uh, um, definitely not trying to educate or um, communicate science or anything. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to share a a passion, um, and and uh, um, communication will occur, and education will occur, right? But those are those are side effects, right? What's what what the main thing is 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 uh, you know I'm I'm I really really like all things astronomical. And and so uh, um, that that is a passion of mine. It's 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 pr it's the most intense one, um, and that's how it always has been, and that's probably how it always will be. Um, you know, that's why uh, I got into this as a profession, 
right? Because it's like, this is what I want to do. Now, at the moment, at least, I'm uh, not earning a living um, um, doing, doing that, but uh, I'm doing my own um, um, independent work and, and uh, you know, not, I mean, it's much more than a hobby, right? A hobby is, um, you know, can be pretty intense, but, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, I guess you can call it whatever um, you want, but, but uh, I call it um, part of my work. So, so uh, it's just another hat that I wear, and I, I wear many, many, many hats, many hats. So, all right, I'm going to get out of here for now. So peace, cheers, and all of that, and I will see you on the spin in a little less than 23 hours from now. All right, take care, everybody. And it is, it is all good. All right, take care. Bye.